you ready? It's the Roundtable with me, Robert Bannon. It's the Roundtable. Hi. It is the Roundtable, and I happen to be Robert Bannon. Welcome to the Roundtable, everybody. I'm so excited to have you here. We have a big, 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 really big show, as that guy used to say. Hi, everybody. Um, Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Thursday. It is September. (laughs) It's September. And as a school teacher, not the best day. Uh, next week when we do the show, next week when we do the show, I will be back in the classroom on Thursday. Next week we have two shows for you. We have a Wednesday show and a Thursday show. Are you excited about that? Of course we are. Hi, Christine. Greetings. Greetings to you. Hello, Abby Thompson. Welcome. Happy Thursday. Isn't it nice to be back on Thursday? Last week we were here on Friday, and I've been in touch with the firemen. Uh, he is going to hopefully do a fundraiser for my brother's PBA, and we have more on that. And Wendell Pierce and Delaney Williams, how do you beat that? Are, weren't they just fantastic and fabulous? I hope you're going to have a great Labor Day weekend. I'm so excited to be here with you. We have a really big show. It's the best of Broadway. We have Michael Malakel, who plays Aladdin, and Aladdin currently right now on Broadway, and Lana Gordon, who currently is playing uh, Velma Kelly. When she comes up on that stage and does all that jazz, you are not going to want to miss a moment. It is such a fantastic moment in the show. I love being here. Hey, Janelle, thank you so much. Janelle sent me a care package for the beginning of school and we'll show it, she'll show it to you next week. And thank you, Abby. I appreciate that. Thursday just feels like home. Thursday's been the home of the previous show, which is called Quarantine Cabaret and Cocktails. It just feels like it's supposed to be here, right? That's how I feel. Next week, Wednesday and Thursday, Opa Baba Tante, a Tony nominee for Dream Girls, starred in a ton of shows, toured with Liza Minnelli, and then went on to have a big, giant, monstrous career on television and film. You've seen him in everything from Philadelphia on to Dear White People to uh, like tons of 168 TV shows and movies. He will be here one night to talk about Broadway, one night to talk about television and film. So meet me Wednesday and Thursday. I'm going to need something to look forward to after spending my day Back in the classroom. Uh, so please join us in the week after that. I can announce it here. I want to be where the people are. I want to see, want to see them dancing. Jody Benson is here, the voice of the Little Mermaid. She will be here with us to talk about her new memoir, Part of My World, in two weeks from tonight. So stay with me because we have a lot of great big shows for you. Plus we've been doing these round table talks where I get to just talk for 20 minutes with an artist and it's not live and it's just me and them. And I edit it and put it up on the YouTube. And some of you watch this week's was good. This week's was really good. This week's was Taylor Goldsmith, who is the lead singer of Dawes, who is an Emmy nominated songwriter for a little show called This Is Us. I talk about my cousin who I hear her upstairs. She was watching, watch This Is Us and would just sit on the couch and cry, just like I do about going back to work. And my friends, Kristen and Kristen would write me and they would cry. And everyone I know who watched the show would cry. Well, one of the reasons we cry is because of the haunting melody and music of the show. And the man responsible for that is Taylor Goldsmith. He's an Emmy nominee, a songwriter, a singer, a member of Dawes, and happens to be Mandy Moore's husband. So he felt like he had an insight to the character and the characters of the show and wrote the song. So check out that interview. If you didn't see it, you can watch it. Um, for sure. Is the new Ariel confirmed? Like the the Ariel that is um the Haley and and the other girl? I w- I we could ask. I will ask. They'll say no, but I will ask. Uh Oba will fabulous. He's fabulous. He's so good. He's really good. Yeah, Taylor's a cool guy. Taylor's like a real earthy, crunchy kind of guy. He was he was fun to to chat with. Um, he was literally on tour when I only had 15 minutes with him and he was waiting for me to call him, but he didn't realize it's on camera. So I was like, oh my gosh, we missed the interview. And they were like, he's been waiting for you. And I was like, I've been waiting for him. And he's a rock star, man. Uh, so make sure when you look at the videos, you like, comment, share, and subscribe them. I would be ever so grateful. The more you like and share and subscribe, the more people get to see them. Uh, all righty. Are you ready? Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls, children of all ages, it's time for the Week in Review. You know, when you're a school teacher, you try to cram everything in that you possibly can in the last moment. Hi, Mark. Thank you for being ready. Um, so I uh, 
I had a lot of fun this week. Um, did a lot of fun things and I have a lot of people to thank. So bear with me. Firstly, big shout out to the cast of Little Shop of Horror. Uh, I had so much fun with my cousin Michelle, went with my, my goddaughter Vanessa. We had great seats. We headed down to the West Side Theater, upstairs at the theater there. Rob McClure, who's been on my other show, uh, Christian Burrell, Everyone that's in uh, Tom Allen Robbins was on my other show. Uh, so fantastic. This is a must see if you're in New York. If you come to New York, Christine, Lattes, Abby, Mark, everyone watching, if you come to New York, please check out Little Shop of Horrors. You have to, have to, have to, have to see it. It was such a fantastic time. Make sure you see it. Here we were uh, at Little Shop. We had such a great time. I loved it. Um, and then I went over to see my friends and family over at the Buble concert in Philly. They're my people, the Buble people are my people. So it was so nice to see Mike and the team there. Um, those are my my friends. That's my Lauren and Lauren and Jarrett. Uh, they were so fantastic in the show. This show is so great. It's the higher tour. When you see Mike is coming to a city near you, make sure you get your tickets because there's fireworks, there's confetti, there's a little bit of everything. Uh, Lauren Smith, who's been on this show, is so dynamic and fantastic in that show. Um, that's Jarrett, who is also fantastic and wonderful in the show. Look at my friend Greg there. What a star. He knows where a camera is and turns right. He just has it right on him. He's just like, pow, bam. That's uh, he, he knows how to pose for a camera. Uh, Adrian joined me for this show. It's always grateful to be invited and hang out with the Buble family. So make sure you check them out as well. What else did I do? Oh, we went to the Harry Potter store in the city. There's the little Sam and there's Vanessa. And uh, it was a hit. Butterbeer. Who doesn't like a little butterbeer? Not a huge fan of J.K. Rowling, but I can't take away what she created, and we had a lot of fun. And then I got to see Rob Beetlejuice, a coming sh upcoming show. Some of the cast of Beetlejuice and Little Shop of Horror will be here for a big Halloween kind of extravaganza. And I want to thank my friends at Polk. Thank you to the people at Polk. I appreciate you all for inviting us. We had such a wonderful time at the Beetlejuice show. And uh, it was a lot of fun, and I'm so grateful to everybody. So if you want to check out Beetlejuice at the Marquee Theater with the incredible Tony-nominated Alex Brightman and Carrie Butler and lots more people, Adam Danheiser and all sorts, David Josephsberg, it's such a great show. It's great for this holiday and for this fall. Make sure you check out Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice at the Marquee Theater when you can. You will love it. Tell them the roundtable sent you. All righty. So yeah, what a week and what a week to come. What a weekend to come. What am I doing this weekend? I'm seeing Lunell. Um, and uh, I'm going to see Patty Murin. Patty Murin of Frozen is doing shows at for below. So, but the next two days, I'm doing I'm binge watching television and taking a break, right? Uh, and that comes, <laughs> and my dad, my dad is going home on Monday. So that is a production in 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 of itself. At the end of the show today, I have a special clip that I took from my seats at the Buble concert of his his final song in the set called Bring It On Home. And uh, I, I filmed it and brought it exclusively to you for the round table. So stick around to the end if you want to see a free look at the round table exclusive Michael Buble moment. It's time for the shameless plug. Cause I'm shameless. So you can see me come on one and come all come to New York city. We're filming a live album. It's going to be on October 22nd. You're not going to want to miss it. It's called rewind. It's the show you guys have seen, but it's going to be a little bit better, a little bit bigger. And it's going to be recorded for a live album. So I need you to come and be rowdy. Yes, that includes you, Lattes. www.robertbannon.com. Make sure you get your tickets. Tickets for New York uh, are on sale, as well as Massachusetts, Jersey. And then we're going to be in uh, LA, and those LA tickets are going to be on sale soon. So if you know anyone that's in LA, please make sure, let them know. Come on down. Come see the show. Same band, same banter, same story, same crazy me. Looking forward to having you there. Also, if you would do me a gigantic favor and make sure that you are already following the Broadway Cast Reunion series on the Instagram. Um, the lecture series is my brand new project that's partnered with uh, Montclair State University. And um, it is called 
uh, the Broadway Lecture Series, and we are going to announce, hopefully, this week, we're just finalizing the contracts, um, this week that we're going to be doing a live event that is also going to be uh, virtual, and it's called the Broadway Cast the Broadway Lecture Series, and we have a big, giant Tony-winning star to open things up. We have a couple of Tony-winning stars who want to be a part of it, and we're going to need, uh, hopefully, your support. So uh, you can watch it online, or you could come live to Montclair. There's a meet-and-greet option. There's going to be um, a conversation, a Q&A. It's limited to 188 seats. It's me moderating a discussion with a Tony-winning superstar that you may know. This one just won a Tony. He just won a Tony for his first show. That's my clue. So if you're going to be here, you're going to definitely want to check this one out. It's going to be pretty damn amazing. So make sure you join us. As my mom always says, if you'd like to support the roundtable, you can always do that at Venmo. You can virtually tip me at R. Bannon. The money goes to promote the show. Last week, we had over 7,000 people. The week before, we had over 15, 16,000 people. The Lunell interview is at 17,000. So... Come on one and come all. Come on down to the round table. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can send a, a buck or two at Venmo at our bed. So we want to know what my shirt says. It says I'm a prisoner of my addiction. It's from the weekend. It's a weekend. It's a weekend edition of the shirt. So uh, it's a weekend shirt that years ago when I'm – I'll leave my name dropping. All right. When I met the weekend, we both were wearing the same shirt. Maybe I should tell that story. You know, my cousin came over. My cousin came over and uh, is building a railing and fixing the bathroom so it's accessible for my dad. My dad is coming home on Monday, just in time for me to go back to work. So it's like all summer we rehabbed and hospitaled up. And then he's going <laughs> home my last day off. So thank you, God. My dad is coming home. And um, I saw my cousin who was fixing the house up, who's a contractor. And he was like, I love your stories on Sunday. And I always hate them because I feel like they're so ridiculous. I'm like telling nonsensical. But if you ask Robbie Roselle, who's watching right now, Robbie Roselle will tell you that I live for some salacious backstage theater gossip. I do. When I went to go to his house, I'm like, tell me about working with this sitcom star. Tell me about working with this Broadway diva. Tell, And I love it. Thank you, Robbie. And I love you. So um, sending you so much love. I can't wait. We're going to have so much fun. We're making a Christmas album. It's happening. If I have to force Yaz to do it. See, I love the tea. So to be able to tell a little tea, some tea I can't tell on here. So I tell on Instagram. Some tea I can't tell anywhere. So I tell on the Instagram pre-show at 6.30. Correct, Janelle. Correct, Christine. Correct, Abby. Correct, Lisa. You were all there. And I told a story about going to Stephen Schwartz's guest apartment. Matt Gould was staying there, as he does. And I can't, I won't say more. But it involves a raccoon cookie jar. Pocahontas makes still a lot of money. Uh, I had the pleasure, the great, 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 great pleasure last week to talk to such a star. She's such a star. And I saw uh, Chicago because Jennifer Holiday was in Chicago. It wasn't really scandalous. I could tell this story. All right. I will tell Robbie this story in person. It's not that good. I promise. So I, I got to see Chicago because Jennifer Holiday was in it. I want to thank everyone at BBB Way to send me and my friend Mike. We went to see the show and I saw Miss Holiday. We talked all about it and she... Um, seeing a Broadway lecture series. You know, Robbie made the design for the Broadway lecture series. I've talked to too much. So um, thank you, Robbie. So, well, uh, we went to see Chicago. Chicago's like an old friend. It lives forever. It, it is like Cats and Phantom of the Opera. And um, I don't know what else lives forever. Cher, cockroaches. There's Chicago. And it's such a wonderful, fun old friend. And I hadn't seen it since Melanie Griffith did it. And I went back to see Jennifer Holiday, and then I fell in love with Lana Gordon. Lana Gordon is such a superstar that when I ended, the, when I left the show, I emailed BBB Way, the publicist for the show, and I said, please, please, please. And like Les Mis, yes. I said, please, 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 please. Um, let's, let's have Lana Gordon come on and talk to me. So last week when she had a moment in between shows, she stopped by to say hello. So if you're in New York City and you want to see an oldie but a goodie, there's a lot of great people and casting that goes on in this show. Ladies and gents, Lana Gordon. 
someone you, who did theater as a kid? Did you do it? You know. Let's try that again. Ladies and gentlemen, prep your show, everybody. <laughs> Properly. <laughs> Lana Gordon. Saw an old friend, that old friend with Chicago the Musical. And when the show started, and this next performer comes on stage for one of the most iconic openings, her dancing, her voice, her acting, her choices, her... I was mesmerized the whole time. I was mesmerized. And I came back and raved about it. And then luckily, thanks to some divine intervention, the superstar is here. Lana Gordon is here. And I can't wait to talk to her. Oh my God, what an introduction. I'm like blushing. <laughs> no, it's so true. Thank before, you. Before I hear all about your background and, and your, your education and dance and, and all of the work you've done, can I just say, I have not seen Chicago since Melanie Griffith was in Chicago in 2002 or three. Wow, wow. And one of the first shows I ever saw was Chicago. I went with my uncle and my aunt, the original cast, Anne, Ra Anne Ranking, B.B. Newworth of the revival, and was blown away because the, the music and, and the, the choreography and the story. Yeah. Then saw the movie, and of course we all saw the movie. It was like going back to an old friend I had not been. And you come on stage and that you just own that role. Oh my God. It, and by the intermission, I was with my friend Mike and I looked at him and I'm like, Velma is a superstar. It's true. It's so true. Congratulations. Thank you so much for saying all of those beautiful things. <laughs> No, truly, it's so true. Well, I know I've, I did my little, I dug a little research about you. All right, you're from Connecticut, so you're tri-state. Right. Tri and when did you start this? As I'm, I'm unprofessional and not on, do not disturb. That, it, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start dancing and singing? When did the bug get you? Well, my mom said I was like, when I was in my pamper, she said I was singing. Um, so I don't know what that was. Maybe I was Pampers at nine. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> nine years old in my Pampers. No. Um, <laughs> um, I started dancing at nine years old at Matchy's Studio Dance School in Durham, Connecticut. Um, and she told me, she was like, you're, you know, dancing, you know, you have such big hips. And, you know, I'm a nine-year-old. <laughs> big hips for a nine-year-old. But discouragement never got to me. So I just kept going, you know, my next door neighbor said, cause I was like, I want to be on Broadway. And she was like, well, you know, only one out of thousands make it. Well, I said, well, I'm going to be that one. <laughs> so yes. I had to drive at a very young age. Yeah. And were you someone who did theater as a kid? Did you do it like yes. the high school? Apps. Well, yeah, no, no, actually I did. I did show choir. Okay. But I was always in the ensemble because, you know, I went to an all um, predominantly white school mm -hmm. and I was like one out of three black mm -hmm. children there. So the roles that were given were not for me. <laughs> so I was always in the in the ensemble. So. But yeah. I well, and I, I know that's the case, and that's why I'm not to become. Well, we're here, we're deep, we're in the we're in the muck of midst of it all. That's right. the whole important part about, um, and it's so beautiful to see you in a role, if I may say so, as a very white yes. person, yeah. to see you in a role represented and the representation that Chicago and all and Broadway, hopefully more so in the future, the colorblind casting of it all and the representation, because there's a little girl out there who wants yeah. to do Bob Fosse choreography or is learning these songs and gets to see you on stage. That's a very powerful moment. Well, actually yesterday, yesterday, a woman says, no, I, I, uh, I don't, I don't want anything, but I just want to come up to you. And I want to tell you how much it means to me to see a woman that represents me, us in this role. Thank you so much. I said, well then spread the word, let it be known. You know, yes. so, uh, there's a lot of little ones out there that are like, oh, my God, she looks like me. There was one little girl. She was must be like four or five. I said, did you get all the jokes? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> she didn't know even that. But she was like the, she turned to her mom. And she said, oh, mommy, she looks like me. That makes me want to boohoo cry. Yes. That is yes. gorgeous. Yeah. 
Well, you I, I, you hung in there and then you end up going to Alvin Ailey. Yeah, Alvin which... Ailey. Um, I wanted to come right to New York City. My mom says, no, you go to college first. So I went to college at Dean Junior College, got my associates in the fine arts, and then I moved to New York City and got on. I was on scholarship at the school. And I wanted to be an Ailey. That's all I wanted to do. Wanted to be an Alvin Ailey dancer. And I did the second company. And you did the second company. How was that experience? It must have been hard. It must have been amazing. 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 I mean, I work with Matthew Russian. You know, I, I worked with some pretty heavy hitters um, then. And then how did, were, at that point, when you're a student in Ailey, because for people watching right now to not know, are you able to audition? Or are you, is it one of those schools where it's like yeah. you need to? They handpicked you. They handpicked you. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, that, that, back then they handpicked. I don't know if they do it now if they audition, but I think Sylvia Waters, you know, she, they look around and a lot of talk and I think they just, they handpick you. You're ready. So I was ready. And I wanted to be in the first company because, you know, when you get the second company, you get this urge to go even further. Mm -hmm. And I was one out of um, maybe five black girls and uh, my friend um, got the job and, and I was devastated, devastated. But that same exact day, I went and auditioned for Donald Bird, the group. Okay. Oh, wow. I was looking for one girl and I got it. Wow. I mean, wow. And did you ever have a moment throughout this, like through in that time where it finally made sense? Like, is that the moment where you go, okay, this is for me. That's not for a lot of people think they, you, you know, the journey, but then it takes a winding road. No, I, I literally, I got into Donald Byrd, did that for a year. It's, I don't know. Donald Byrd is very, very, he's a master at mm. Master of his craft, and he wants perfection out of every dancer. And and he got a little bit out of me, but then I realized, Jesus, I don't really want to do this either. And I always would sing in the shower, and mm -hmm. I was with three other roommates, and they said, you know, um, this woman in Japan's looking for a singer. And so I remember she called me up. She said, "Could you sing over the phone?" And I said, "Hold on." And I turned on some Rochelle Farrell, and you know, tape player telling my age, turned on the tape player, <laughs> tape player. And I said, Rochelle Farrell, and she said, could you leave tomorrow? And, and, I, left, and I left to go to Japan a couple days later for three months. For three months, singing in a club. Singing in a club, Sona Banana. So, ah, what, a, what a ride from Connecticut all the way to Japan. Right, Japan, <laughs> I made some good money. I had a papa son who came in. Papa San is someone that just admires you and um, sees your talent. And he, he would, I remember getting like a thousand yen and I put it in my, I think I have the picture somewhere where it's like in my little area, like decote. And uh, he just came and he gave money just to hear me sing, I will survive or, or you know. <laughs> I'm obsessed. I, I can't picture anything. What else are you going to sing in Japan? What are you <laughs> And then, and then one woman came from DC and blew me out of the water, sang circles around me. And I remember calling my mom and I said, mom, this woman is magnificent. She said, you could do two things. You could be so envious of her, you can learn. I said, I'm gonna learn. So I watched her. And then one day she was at the bar, you know, we'd have her little drank or whatever. And she turned to me, she goes, good job. You know, those little things. At, yes. Those little you know, moments. What advice for your mom? Yeah. From your mom. yeah. Be uh, or, or, or learn. There's always going to be someone better. Absolutely. Better. Someone what, with different skills. <laughs> whatever that means. Absolutely. Whatever that means. What a great advice. I, I, it's hard because as an artist, all of us as artists, like you're someone else books a part you audition for, someone else has a role that you want. It's very hard. It's, and it's an industry that a lot of the time is based on fear. It's based on you're never going to work. <laughs> you're never going to, the fact that you have a job is already a miracle. Like, so don't, and uh, 
Yeah. So to, to, uh, to really be able to not, to learn how to not be envious, there's enough work for all of us. There's, there's yeah. room for us all. That's when I, when I come out and I sign autographs, if I'm lucky enough to do that, which I have been, you know, these hopefuls, they're just like, any advice? And I said, don't take anything personally. Do not. And there's enough for everybody. Yeah. Well, I saw you at the stage door. I mean, that's how, and I literally, I ignore, I, I saw you at the stage door. I was waiting for Miss Holiday herself. We, she had been on the show a couple of weeks ago and I was waiting for her. She said, come, I'm going to say hello. And then you came out. A, you speak like all these languages to people. They're ah, German. German. <laughs> It was this couple and you just started this whole conversation and you were, you're so beautiful and kind to everyone that's there. They, they are clawing over themselves to talk to you because you literally, I, I know we go back to the show, but you burn the stage down by the end of the show. And, um, you started your, you toured Europe and then you end up on Broadway. I believe your first show was hair made on Broadway. Yeah, yeah. Hey, no hair in Europe. in Europe. Okay. And Lion King on Broadway. Lion, Lion King, 1998. That was my first Broadway show. So what is that moment like? What is the phone call after all of the years of work and you're in Japan and you're in Europe and you're auditioning and then you get to, you know, it's this dream of that nine-year-old girl gets to take a step on, uh, on Broadway. You mean as in Lion King? Mm -hmm. I remember I was in um, my a good friend's um, house apartment and I didn't have an agent then. You know, I waited online seven hours to sing I don't know, eight bars. And, and they said, Lana, do you dance? And I literally hopped into first position. I said, yes, I do. And the, and I had a three day, it was a three day audition for Lion King. It was three days. And I, you know, we're, I was just ferocious. I was in the front, didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, hi, 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 babe, I, I, you know, just, and I remember getting that call and says, you know, you booked it. And I was like, I remember that day, like it was yesterday. Screamed! Oh my God! Welcome to Broadway. Welcome to Broadway, and you did that. Uh, you did that a couple iterations. You and you, your part grew throughout the experience as yeah, well. I, I mean, my my story with Heather Headley was I watched her in the wings all the time. Admiration, 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 still admiration, and she fallen. Both of her understudies were out. I was like, I knew all her lines because I go home and sing it, and I went on that night to be her. <laughs> under you know to to go on that that saturday night i was not her understudy i was just someone who watched her and learned her role off the that's what that's really what happened yeah that's <laughs> insane talk about being ready and preparation meets a moment that is, yeah that is, yeah wow. wow well i mean just like if you want something you know you'll come it may take a long road, you know, yes. to get there, but eventually you'll get to where you want to go. Absolutely. I agreed. Well, I, um, <laughs> story, no, right, everybody, you better go learn something, right? And everyone better stay ready, go <laughs> leave this interview and go start learning a score. And uh, if you're interested in being in musical theater, be ready, be ready. Be ready. Um, from there, you end up going, you do Jesus Christ Superstar. You do West Side Story in this, uh, you, it was in Europe as well? Yeah, Joey McNeely, his, his tour. We're still good friends to this day. I adore him. Um, but yeah, I auditioned for him once, didn't get it. And then I, I walked it, my agent at that time called and says, you have a last minute audition. And I said, it's like 10 o'clock at night. When she gave me, you know, like this last minute, I walked in. I said, look, my nails are busted. This is what it is. And there he goes, there's Anita. <laughs> so. What a, what a, what a ride. Okay. Yeah. So then what is an audition process like? How did, did you get a call? Did you go, did you, did you get an appointment? Did you ask, did you want to be Velma? Like, how does it work to be in a show that has oh, run? Honey, for honey, honey, honey. <laughs> I lived overseas for 10 years. And I was doing a lot of shows in German and I had no interest in doing, no interest. I did, didn't think that Velma Kelly, I didn't even know who Velma Kelly was. And Chicago was coming down the pipe, for Germany. And um, <laughs> Ralph Shaler gave Rob Bowman, hey, you need to see this girl. 
and they played this video from on, off, you know, online. And, and he was like, we need to see her, bring her in. So they brought me in for Velma and they, they loved me. Rob Bowman was like, Lana, can you see you like that? And it's 10 o'clock, it's 10, <laughs> 10 a.m. And um, so I got the role of Velma Kelly in German. Let's talk about stressed out. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. But I did the, sh did the show for one year in Stuttgart. They didn't take me to Berlin. I was devastated. Devastated because I was the only one in the cast not to go. The only one. I mean, it's not coming out of the nose. What do you mean I'm not going? <laughs> Just devastated. And then I wrote, you know, one of my friends who, you know, uh, dance supervisor, um, and I said, they're not taking me to Berlin. <laughs> Dramatic. He's like, would you like to audition for the Broadway co company? So I walked into Duncan Stewart's office the same time that Amra Fay was leaving for seven weeks to do a gig. And he said, this never happens when Amra's leaving. Would you like to audition for Walter Bobby? So I auditioned for Walter Bobby. I looked on the screen, looked and I saw, okay, this is where I'm going to audition. There's no one else but me. I'm the only one. I walk in, I work with David Bushman, um, musical director um, at that time. Um, um, oh God, forgetting the name, but this is my music director. And then Walter Bobby comes in at the end. And then they were like, okay, Duncan, okay, hey, Lana, step out. I stepped out and I was like, man, because they asked me to do sister acting, you know, my sister and I, and I didn't really know yes. it, but I knew it enough. So I kind of did my best. And I said, oh, man, I messed that up. Man, you know that? I messed that up. I didn't get it. And they were, Lana, wait outside. And they all went, goodbye, Lana, goodbye, Lana, goodbye, Lana. I was like, man, I didn't get that. And Duncan goes, come in, come back in. And Duncan goes, welcome to Broadway. Are you, you, are, <laughs> are you are kidding. What? Yeah. And I've been like, I left my world in Europe for like, I've been there for 10 years and, and I left for six weeks, six weeks on Broadway because I knew something was going to happen. And I ended up moving back and the six weeks turns to off and on for six years. For six years. Wow. Wow. Well, I'm going to be a broken record. I'm telling you, I, we've all seen this part. I mean, we all have seen this. It's an old, I keep saying it's an old friend. Go back and see this old friend that is Chicago the Musical because the life you bring to her and oh. and, this, and this ensemble is gore, is beautiful. But what's fun, if I can be a nerdy actor with you for a minute. Ooh, please be nerdy. Musical theater gets a bad reputation about acting. Everyone is, you know, the snooty actors are always like, they sing and they dance and then they act. But this part, I mean, you're a convicted murderer. You're trying to get off. There's, there's, a, there's deception. There's all of these fun things that you get to play every single night as you try to bamboozle this, this imaginary world that you live in. What was your inspiration? How did you find this Velma Kelly in you? What was you, what did you, there's so many iconic people who have been Velma through the years. How did you find your Velma? What was your process? Oh gosh. I mean, I, I would say six years ago, I didn't really know who she was mm -hmm. because I didn't know who I was. And going through this pandemic, I learned a lot about myself. I've lost a lot of family members. I've lost a lot of love experience. That's how I found it. And recently letting go of the fear, getting out there and saying, I don't care if people like me. Cause you know, as artists, we're like, are they going to like me? But when you get out of that, are they going to like me? Then the truth comes out. Then your real authentic self comes to the forefront. And I said, once I let go of that fear, magic began. I mean, I have sometimes a little, but very rare, very rare. I mean, I've all, obviously I've learned from the greats, but more or less I've learned from myself, yes. my, my own, my own journey, my own self 
my own self sabotage to you know what I'm not gonna I'm not, I'm gonna I'm gonna lead with joy. I'm gonna lead with joy and love and see how that works for 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 the time. Well, that that resonates uh, with me as I attacked you a couple of weeks ago in on Instagram after I saw your performance and was like I don't I don't that was so beautiful and, and moving. And I like ramble on to say, just my, I told my own story. I, I, I told you like I, 18 years old, I stopped performing after going to Juilliard prep because I had a bad audition for rent and I didn't sing for 15 years. And the fear and the insecurity and the people pleasing and the, I'm not good enough and everything really robbed me of those years. And now I know why it all happened because- It didn't rob you. It, did not. it served you because you were supposed to go through that so it was a beautiful thing for you. It is. And that's why when I said before, like that, that moment when you come to and say, okay, it makes sense now. Now I have something to say. When I see someone living authentically on stage and, and, and being so comfortable, no matter if it's on Broadway or if it's in the community theater down in, you know, so-and-so, that's there's such a beautiful, magical moment. That's what art is all about. And when you, I watched you and you come out and you do the opening and all of that, and, and then you do, then, then she said, and then I said, then you do that, that little part and the whole thing. By the end of the show, when you do the big finale, which is probably my favorite, one of the best numbers in, in Broadway history, truly, it's like the, I'm getting your, thinking about your, it. Your energy, your 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 living, your living. I hear we I, we were like third row. Thank you to your, your the the Chicago team for having me. And then we were like third row, and I hear you. Yes, and a and oh and ah and like you're just you are that. In my opinion, you're that girl who's living it up there. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard work. I know you bust your ass. I know that there are days where you want to lay in bed and get a massage. I know you, but. Well, you, you know, you sometimes you lay there and you, where you get up and you're like, but I did get sleep. I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really, you were mesmerizing. So thank you for sharing that with us. You've worked with some pretty, I mean, uh, over the past year alone since the pandemic, I mean, you've caught, you guys have caused a little news there, Lana. You guys have had some, some cast members and continue to have people coming in. What's it like when, you know, Roxy changes a lot. Mama changes a lot. Um, and you guys really rally behind these these performers who come in and make them look great and, and support them. I'm sure you have a lot of put in rehearsals. How is it, how, how is it when um, when the show, when the, the changeover happens? What's it like when you are across from a new a new person? Does it bring new energy? Is it is it fun? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. I mean, of course, when I sat and down for the first time to sing with Jennifer Holiday, you know, that little girl of like always watching her and going, oh my God, she's just magnificent. She's amazing. She's all that, whoa. And here I am singing next to her. And la the last show, you know, class, we sang class together, obviously. What I happened to, we held that one note, we looked at each other's eyes and held this note longer than it's supposed to be held. And it brought me to tears. She has given me such nuggets, some beautiful advice that I will hold uh, close to my heart. I am so grateful for those little mm. nuggets of advice from these people that I put way up here. But then you, you meet them and they're just, they're just people. Mm. Well, beautiful people like herself. She she is so beautiful, and your duet together, that class moment together. It's so nice to hear her the nuances of her voice. I mean, she's so iconic for what she has done, and she's a trailblazer. And and you know, performers stand on her work and her shoulders. But you guys in that nice, quiet, those quiet, beautiful, warm, buttery moments together, and to hear your voice compliment her voice together in that, it, it was a really beautiful moment. It was yeah, such a beautiful- She said our, our voices match. I even, it's a text she gave me, so I'll, it's a text she's like, and I was like, oh my God, again. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would be remiss, you were all over, I mean, remiss to not bring up, you guys kind of, you know, broke the internet with you, uh, you and Pam. Oh, I love Pam. <laughs> <laughs> she was a hard worker. She was a perfectionist. I love that about her. 
she kept getting better, better, and better, and better. You know, I, when I thought about her doing this, that takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of to say, look, I'm an actress. I do TV. I do I do film. People don't know me for singing and dancing. And you step into a Fosse choreography, a show, but music by Kanner and Ebb, and and then to do it. And that that woman has lived her life under so much scrutiny. I am so happy that she has kind of got her due in, in the media and hopefully. Great voice, beautiful voice. Thanks. We matched really well together. She was a beautiful spirit. I loved working with her. And I miss I miss her and I missed her. And she's like, I hope to be back. And I said, I hope you are back too. <laughs> I loved it. I love it so much. And then you have some great new people. Eric Bergen's coming into the show. He was there last night with Charity Dawson, who threw down. Show was completely different once again, which is so nice. Yeah, it keeps you all on your toes. That I love it. Yeah, exactly, because everybody has a different delivery, a different way of interpreting their character. So it's nice. But you, everyone watching, you look at look how beautiful she. My goodness gracious, I can't even yeah, handle it. <laughs> we need to go. <laughs> In case you are looking to grab tickets to see this star here, you can just make sure you go to ChicagoTheMusical.com yes. and yes. get. And if everyone wants to follow the journey, you can go to Instagram and you're at Lana Jean Gordon. I, I I can't tell you. It makes me the 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 little the the musical theater nerd that I am growing up. It's such, such a nice feeling to go back to this show and to see it done so masterfully as you, Lana. I don't. What is gonna happen next? I'm so excited to be front row with a bucket of popcorn and see you oh, on stages and screens all over the place. Yeah, I have a great um, a great team behind me. So. Um who really believe in me. And, you know, that's all, that's all, that's what, what it's all about. You know, I have a great manager, great agents. So we're, we're plugging away like, you know, everyone else. Yes. Come to the pavement. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> uh, I am so grateful to have chatted with you. You're such an inspiration and such a bright light of joy in this. So we're going to take that with us. Spread some, joy. Spread some joy. I muted it as always. There's a new Velma Kelly. They mute me automatically. This is my show. Just kidding. Come back with my show. Do you remember that? Um, there's a new Lana Kelly coming in with Angelica Ross and Brandon Victor Dixon is playing Billy Flynn. So if you want to see Chicago, it's going to be new uh, in October. But La uh, Lana is still there and you got to check it out. Chicago, go to chicagothemusical.com. Get your tickets to Chicago. Let me catch up with your comments. Hi, Marie. Welcome, welcome. You're late, but you're here. We were talking about upcoming events. I mentioned that you're you're doing a, uh, your nephew is running for board of education, and I will be singing at the fundraiser. So if you're in Jersey, you can come check me out. You can go uh, find information. I'll put it up on robertbannon.com. So I appreciate you. Um, yes, it's important. You got to love yourself. Uh, Marie says, Robert, you're the oh, Marie. Thank you. Right back at you. Appreciate you so much. Uh, Michael Melfa is the old friend. He is the old friend that I saw Chicago with. This one right here. So when you see him, come see me in New York, Jersey, um, LA, Massachusetts, wherever. A 7-Eleven opening, a car wash, court deposition. Mike will probably be there. So make sure you stop by and <laughs> say hello to him. Um, yeah, I love I love her too, Lisa. She's a, she's a real class act. Um, she is a beautiful, brilliant, uh, and a, definitely a role model. She shines real bright, right, Mike? They will not mute my voice, Michael. Speaking of Jennifer Holiday, I heard from Jennifer Holiday too. And uh, I'm telling you, Mike, what do you think about Jennifer Holiday for our little future things we have going on? She's a good pick. She doesn't like to fly in the snow, but maybe she has to come up to Jersey. Uh, for a little something, something. Uh, make sure you keep following us. Follow robertpennant.com and follow at Broadway Lecture Series, which we may change. And there's a lot going on. But you know what also went on this summer? I went and saw Aladdin. I saw Aladdin uh, for the first time in a long time. And we were sitting there and um, Mike gave a thumbs up. Just a thought. My... Um, I saw Aladdin. I took the, the little fake... My fake children and I went... <laughs> I went to see Aladdin and um, I was really moved by Michael Malakel 
who is playing. He's the first um, Middle Eastern uh, or or um, but they call, he's the first Indian Aladdin that's on Broadway, and uh, he's from Jersey. So I had to have him here, and he was so graceful to be here. If you haven't seen Aladdin in a while, make sure you check it out. Disney Magic in, in, in all of its glory. Here's the chat earlier this week that I had with Michael. So we had Adam yeah. Jacobs. We had Telly Leong. And when I saw that Michael had embodied this, and he's from New Jersey, like us? Jersey knows Jersey. I was like, come on, Hamilton, New Jersey, you need to come on. So everybody, Aladdin is up and running. It's at the New Amsterdam Theater. And I am so excited to have Michael here. Michael, welcome to the show. Robert, how you doing? Thank you so much for having me. I chickened out. Can you please tell us your full name? I didn't want to mess it up. No, I, I respect that. Michael Maliakel. Maliakel. And I, and I had it and I asked you. And then I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want our first impression me butchering your name congratulations thank you so much thank you it's an honor to be here um i saw the show last night and one of the people with us was their first their four years five years old it was their first broadway show they sat there like a guy at the whole oh. of the show what a magical fun evening and to see that love from the stage must be something every single night. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, I think we're lucky here at Aladdin to have a lot of folks rolling through for whom this is their first Broadway show. So there's a certain responsibility there, right? To, to make sure that, that these new audience members are captivated by what we're doing on stage and hopefully, you know, nurturing the next generation of theater lovers. Um, so that, feels like a big responsibility and we're really lucky to do it. And I've gotten a chance to, to meet some of these folks um, and, and just kind of like, you know, engage with people um, who hopefully someday will become either the next generation of performers. You know, we all remember our first Broadway shows and, and, um, and even if not, at least like, um, you know, lifelong lovers of, of what we do every night. So it's, um, it's really special. It's cool that you got to be there with someone who, who was there for the first time. It was so great. And I, we literally left. And then my goddaughter, who was also with us, was four of us. She was like, so how does the carpet fly? And how does the genie come out of this? Now, that's the magic of Disney on Broadway. That's the magic of the show. Oh, yeah. And it's, you know, it's four-year-olds, but it's also 40-year-olds who are like, how the heck does that work? That is, you know, and I will say even, you know, I've, I've gotten to do it every night now for, I don't know, 200 plus some shows. And it feels... It feels pretty freaking magical every time, I will say. So, well, you're before we talk about Jersey and growing up and how you got into musical theater. You have the most you're you have the most beautiful voice. Everybody, listen. His voice is beautiful. He's like 18 feet tall. He has 76 abs throughout the whole. <laughs> he has not eaten a carb in years. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. Oh man, you know it's it's funny because I I. I actually had never seen the show before I before I got the audition, but I was aware of the costume or the <laughs> lack thereof, should we say, <laughs> from pr promotional photos and and B roll of you know Adam and Telly and all these guys that I've looked up to for years who who played this role. And I will say, nothing motivates you to get your butt off the couch than knowing you're going to have to wear that teeny little vest in front of two thousand people every night. So. Um, but honestly, you know, you saw the show. It's it's a marathon. This role, he's just like he's on stage all the time. There's jumping. There's there's sword fighting. There's it's just like acrobatic, like crazy. So my my people ask me, what do you what's your workout routine? What do you do? I'm like, I do this show every night, and that's really what it is. I'm in a full sweat from that first scene <laughs> until bows, basically. So, <laughs> but no, we have a good time. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate. It. I'm having having the time of my life. Grateful to be here. So Michael, how did this start? You're, you're from Hamilton, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm a Berkeley yeah. County Jersey boy myself. Yes. New Jersey. Come on, so, Jersey. <laughs> come on, Jersey. So how did you get in, indoctrinated into this magical world of, of theater? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm, my story, I think, is is maybe a little bit more um, unusual than, than a lot of the folks that I get to share the stage with and folks in this business. You know, we all sort of have our own path to this crazy career, but... Um, I grew up in, like you said, in New Jersey, the child of Indian immigrants who didn't know top from bottom when it came to um, the performing arts, um, but they were incredibly supportive of my brothers and I in whatever kind of crazy endeavors we wanted to do. 
Um, and, and music was sort of my entryway. Uh, it was my first love, um, choir and singing. And um, that's sort of like what sparked this passion for, for performing in me. Um, and I sort of, you know, fell in love with Western classical music and, and, and decided to, at some point just to truncate a very long winding path to, to study opera. That was sort of what I thought I wanted to do with my life. And so, you know, focusing on really building a solid technique, finding a great teacher and, um, you know, Mozart, Brahms, Beethoven, Schubert, those were, that was my, those were my heroes um, through most of my adolescence and into high school. And um, so I found myself uh, studying opera with, uh, you know, a bel canto voice teacher at the Peabody Conservatory at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore and um, really loved everything about that. Um, but there did come a time after I f left school and moved to New York when I was, you know, sort of like dipping my toes into the audition process for the opera world, which operates very differently from the theater world. Um, and mind you, I had done shows in high school and, you know, no one's really doing operas in high school. So was, <laughs> most of my friends were doing the musical. And so I, I sort of tagged along with that and did a couple of, um, you know, regional theater auditions and uh, had sort of gotten my first taste into the professional theater world when I auditioned for the Spring Awakening um, non-equity tour. Um, I was towards the end of college and I... I, um, you know, was very green, didn't know anything about that world, apart from having just been a fan of, of you know, that, that music. And, um, and so I had some really great feedback from the team involved with that. Um, Carrie Gardner, who was working with Jim Carnahan's office at the time, um, sort of pulled me aside after, you know, several series of callbacks and things. It was like, listen, you've got, you've got some really great raw talent here. There's a lot of politics that needs to happen and you know this business operates within this very specific kind of quirky set of rules and if you want to make a, a career out of it I think there might be a place for you here if you sort of put your head down and do the work and I was still am so grateful for her um, for for being so um, supportive and so constructive with that information um, so you know I, I had this idea in my head of getting into the opera world and pursuing that career and, you know, maybe singing at the Met one day. Uh, and then, you know, all of a sudden these sort of like theater dreams started creeping in. And, and, uh, and then, so I started, uh, was sort of straddling both worlds. When I moved to New York, I was doing a lot of professional choral singing and, um, that was sort of what was paying my bills. And, and, and then I was going to these open calls, these cattle call auditions. Um, and, you know, one thing sort of led to the next, I, my first, I guess, New York real professional gig was um, in an off-Broadway review of Maury Estes songs that he was curating um, at the Triad Theater uptown, you know, gorgeous little theater on 72nd and Robert Cuccioli, Jill Pace, these like really iconic folks who had, um, you know, made their careers singing some of Maury's music. And so I got to work with them and then work with Maury and, and learn some of his, um, you know, tunes that I'd grown up with but also some new stuff that he was working on. So that was really fun. And so I landed my agent who had come to see a show of ours at the triad. So that's sort of how that happened. And, you know, that sort of got the ball rolling for me. Um, I, my first big um, equity gig was um, out at Berkeley rep doing a regional production of Monsoon Wedding, which was uh, this musical theater adaptation of Mira Nair's really iconic film from Ooh, 2001, I want to say. Um, and that was a real trial by fire moment. I was playing the groom, you know, this the lead character in this show at a really reputable regional theater. And I learned so much uh, in that process. Um, shortly after that, I booked the Phantom Tour and I was um, understudying Raoul on that. Um, and that, I think, was the real moment where I was like, okay, this is just surrounded by vets in the business where I was like in an iconic show, got to go on for this role many, many times, traveling the country at all these regional theaters in a show that is, you know, so quintessentially Broadway, right? Just, just, um, just a pillar in the, in the, um, in the, uh, in the theater world. And so that was a real moment where I was like, this is, I think this is where I'm meant to be. And so I... You know, I, I sort of um, at that point had sort of put all of my eggs into this theater basket and was um, ready to let the, the opera land go 
there are, there are things about that world that I do miss for sure. I mean, it's, it's such an incredibly athletic way of singing and like the unamplified voice just filling these massive halls. Like it's, it's extraordinary what these people do. And, you know, I, I have so much respect for that and I still love to go to the opera and still love to listen to it. But um, personally, I, I think my skill sets lie elsewhere, and 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 I was happy to find that um, and and commit to that after the Phantom tour. Um, we closed on February second. It was planned to close in Toronto, and then of course this is 2020, and then of course the world just you know went to went to crap. Uh, but it was nice. To, we were really lucky to have a proper goodbye to that experience. Um, yeah, and then and then the uh, the pandemic sort of knocked us all off our off our trajectories for for a good long while. I was lucky to do a couple of TV gigs here and there. My first guest star spot, mm-hmm. which was really fun. Um, you know, some Zoom workshops and readings like we did to just sort of string it together and and hold us uh, in place until the world got back on its feet. And and I will say that the the Aladdin audition was probably my first main stage um, theater audition after after the pandemic um, started to wane. Um, and so we did our first rounds, you know, self tapes and, and a Zoom callback, just, you know, pretending to jump off of buildings on Zoom, just complete madness. But <laughs> is that really was? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, the audition, the initial audition for Aladdin is, um, it's a cut of one jump and and proud of your boy. Um, and so <laughs> just picture me in my bedroom with my black my backdrop and my setup just jumping off a bill. Ridiculous, completely ridiculous. But um, you know, we did what we had to do. I was just grateful that when the time came to get to those final rounds of callbacks, the vaccines were more well established and um equity had deemed it safe enough to have live in-person auditions. We were able to get into the room with Casey and with the team. And I mean, I don't know how you cast a, a, a lead role on Broadway without seeing someone in the flesh, right? I mean, it's just, just especially, you know, some role as physical as this one. So that was, that was really nice. And, um, you know, they, they put me through it for sure. It was probably like eight, nine rounds. Um, got to read with some Jasmines towards the end there. And then, um, and then, you know, it, I think the whole process probably took about five or six weeks. Um, and each time, you know, it started to feel more and more real. I was like, I think this, this might actually happen. I don't <laughs> know. And then, um, and then to finally get the call, you know, after all these years of, of hard work and, and, um, and sacrifice and, you know, just sort of finding my way and finding a place where I might belong in this crazy profession um, in a show and a piece of, of art that has meant so much to me growing up. Um, it just felt really full circle and really cathartic. And, um, you know, and that's even before I got into the room to start learning this behemoth of a role. Um, it's been, it's been a real, gift i I like treasure every moment even the moments where it feels like you know we're getting ready for that eighth show and you're just like (laughs) there's not enough caffeine in the world but um but i think about you know that that little boy that dreamed of 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 singing for people for a living and and how that boy is now on this massive stage getting to do this show for so many people for whom they've never maybe seen a broadway show and just you know have loved Aladdin and the movie and the animated film and the remakes for so long. It's, it feels, it feels really special. It feels really full circle and um, I feel really lucky. Well, you, you first, I have I, Bel Canto. If anyone watching, you know, learning your craft, I studied Bel Canto. It must be a Jersey thing. I mean, <laughs> it, it, the color of your tongue and the placement, all this craziness that, that's what I studied growing up too was opera, mm-hmm. but I always say I was very grateful for it because it led to a safe foundation. Oh, totally. Screlting and belting your face off so that you ruin your voice. So yes. um, yeah. the technique and the education is so important. I think there's some parallels that I've had dancer friends draw between like ballet, like a you know foundation in ballet and, and, and classical dance informing 
theater styles, jazz styles, you know, maybe even hip hop. And, and I think there's, there's definitely a correlation there that like having a solid foundation and understanding posture and breath and support and placement and diction and all of these things. And, um, you know, I think it's a tricky thing. The crossover career yeah, sometimes gets a bad rap because I, th I do know that there are some classical singers that sort of poo poo on on theater singing as like the easier style yeah. or like you know um the the one form is better than the other and i i think that's all a load of of yeah you know you xyz but i i just think that every style has its challenges and the folks that are doing it at the highest level in each of those genres are masterful athletes in their in their crafts and so well, that's an athletic ability you watch the show go see the show if you haven't seen it he literally is you proud of your boy is not an easy song to mm -hmm. sing uh and then you you jump in all the songs that you know they're all different tempos they're all different ranges and he's jumping and dancing and rolling and fighting and that's a, it's an athletic it's a workout vocally and physically what moved me so much if i may say so about your story I'm during the day when I'm not hosting this or singing or doing whatever nonsense I do. I teach fifth grade in North Bergen, New Jersey. I teach fifth grade. There's a giant population. I have had so many yeah. first generation Indian students mm -hmm. who have come with their parents who don't understand always American culture, mm -hmm. who have come in, they have utmost respect for teaching and education. Don't mind my unprofessional dog. I, I, <laughs> oh, good. Um, and these students, uh, it moves me so much because many, many of them are first generation Americans or their parents are. To see you on stage leading this show um, in a show that we all know, I don't even know what kind of responsibility it must feel like, but also um, the joy. I can go to school the first day in September and when we talk about this, get to point to you and say like, you're into music, look at, look at his career. What has that meant about, you know, you say representation matters. What does that mean for you personally and your family in yeah. this journey that you are that you're on yeah it's it's um it gives me goosebumps to think about it because i i my parents immigrated here in sort of like the first wave of of um of south asian um immigration in like the late 80s i want to say and and at that point you know i grew up in a in a very you know I wouldn't say that it was homogenous, but I think there were very few folks that looked like me in, in, in Hamilton, New Jersey. It was probably one of, I don't know, maybe two or three families in the, in the, the school system that I went to. And so, um, you know, it, it felt, it, it always felt a little bit like um, there's this term third culture kid where like, you're not quite Indian, you're not quite American. You're like this kind of weird melange in the middle. And I think, that sort of has informed the way that I walk through the world in so many ways. Um, and yeah, I mean, representation matters. I, th I think it's, it's something that I feel so deeply because it, it has a ripple effect in so many aspects of, of, um, of, you know, immigrant and second generation um, lived experiences. Like what, how, how we're portrayed in the media, how we're not even sometimes excluded from, from representation portrayals in the media, all of these things have a real profound effect on how you see your, your value and your self-worth in society. And so, um, so I think, you know, in so many ways, I've, I've been lucky to do interviews where people ask me like, what's it like to be the first Indian person doing X, doing Y, whatever. And, and I think it, it feels really special. And I don't, I don't necessarily think that I set out to be the first person to do this. It's just, it's, it just happened to be that there, there hasn't been much representation leading up to this. And so I think, you know, it's, it's important because yes, young kids who look like me, that dream of maybe doing this one day can hopefully look at me and as an example of like, oh, you know, there is someone doing it and it, you know, taking that last bow on, on the new Amsterdam stage, like, look, that could be me someday. How cool is that? And beyond that, I think even even the people that that don't have any specific aspirations of performing, but just to know that you know there are folks that look like them playing romantic leads and beating the bad guy and like saving the day. You know, these are all important things as far as 
feeling like you the stories being told on stage include you that you feel valued that your experiences are honored and respected and 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 the 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 flip sort of flip side of that same coin is that people who might come from you know rather homogenous communities that don't have exposure to people that don't look like them who come to see our show and and see this beautifully diverse cast of 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 talented performers um, just like joyfully telling this story. I think they're able to then go back to their communities and understand that these people who may not look like them, who they don't get to surround themselves with every day are not that different from them really, you know, and that, and that they deserve just as much love and respect and just like to identify the humanity in those people. You know, I think it's, that's so much of what, what I mean when I say representation matters, I think it gets a bad rap. It sort of feels like a catch-all trendy term, diversity in casting, right. but mm -hmm. but it's so much more than just like a, a, a news point, right? It's about, and it's, I mean, it's it goes so far beyond even just like multiculturalism. I'm talking like disabled representation, um, gender representation, sexuality, um, all of these things that, ultimately help us as a community move forward, like move the dial forward, right? And, and help people understand that those things that on paper make us different are, are actually just, you know, societal, cultural things that are put upon us. Like we actually all feel these same things. We all want to, to, um, to find love, to, to make our families proud, to, you know, these are all really like universal feelings and stories. And I think sometimes just putting the bodies in those roles to, to tell those stories has this profound effect. Um, and, and I feel like in this moment, I've been so lucky, you know, I, I have a love hate relationship with social media, but, mm -hmm. but to, to have that direct connection with folks to be able to speak with them and message with them and hear how, they have been moved by coming to our show and seeing people that look like them on a Broadway stage, maybe for the first time and what that means and to tell this story that has been so, so much a part of their lives growing up. It, it all feels really, it feels so much bigger than me, if that makes sense. You know, like I, on the one hand, I just, when I was growing up, I just wanted to be a kid that, that was able to sing and tell stories and pay the bills doing that. And I still am that person, but the reality is that there is a greater responsibility in this position, at least until someone like me being in a leading role on Broadway is no longer a big news story, right? Which is, that's the ultimate goal. That's what we're all hoping for that, that someday um, it's, it's all. And I think we're getting there. I think there's, there's work to be done, but I, I do feel encouraged and heartened by the fact that the powers that be the gatekeepers, so to speak, are, mm -hmm. are realizing like, you know, you can put, you can have a black girl playing Galinda on Broadway and that show will still sell like gangbusters, believe it or not. And, and, and in the process, we'll welcome in a whole new community of folks into the theater world. And, and that that's, that's a beautiful thing. It's about progress. It's about, you know, why, why put the same revival of XYZ on stage and, and, and have it just be a carbon copy of what's already had, like watch the DVD, man, just watch the DVD. Like don't, why are we bothering? So I think I think that's I'm heartened that that a lot of the new work that's coming down the pipeline seems to be um, moving in that direction, and um, and I think that's going to make us all feel like what we're doing matters in a way more than just entertainment, but but in terms of just like evolving the general zeitgeist yes it, <laughs> like I'm on my, my soapbox here <laughs> no, no please it, it's what's so important it's it moved me i i just it really is what stuck with me while i was watching and I, I can't wait to go back in the classroom in september because i know that i'm gonna have those students that their first day walking into a classroom in the united states is my room it's a huge responsibility to introduce them what it means to be an american and it's nice yes. to have role models and people that that can point to that are successful in many different fields. I hey, thank you for doing that because I think it's it is a responsibility to to make those children's experiences feel valued and all of that. So I think I think what you're doing is really special. No. Well, congrats on your family. You have a beautiful family and and uh, I don't know how you juggle it all. Um, 
<laughs> it's a lot of a lot of caffeine and a lot of help. We have plenty of help from our in laws, I will say. And and it's uh, I, I welcomed a, a baby girl. Um, she will. She's twelve weeks this week, so oh my um, she's very much uh, you know a, a, a fresh little baby, and uh, we are completely in love. I was able to take some time off from the show, which I'm really grateful for. To those early weeks are a total wash, um, but uh, to be able to you know, get our feet under ourselves and then coming back to the show and having everyone in the building just be so supportive. We've got some some parents of, of little ones in the cast too and to lean on them for advice and support on how do you make this work <laughs> <laughs> has been really, really special. Um, and the real answer is just, well, you know, one day at a time. And I think some days are easier than others. Sleep obviously in this career um, is, is uh, the be all end all in terms of, health and longevity and maintenance. So, so that's sort of like, we're still figuring that out and, you know, she's going to get better at sleeping and all of that. But my wife is a rock star and I'm so grateful for her support in all of this um, pre baby, post baby, all of it. It's, it's really, really, I wouldn't be able to do it without, without her. And so I think, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the other thing, you know, it sort of relates back to what we've been talking about. Like I, I look at her and I think about like what, I look at my, my baby and I look at, I think about like what it, what it means. Like maybe someday she might want to to do this herself, or even if not just to know that her dad was doing something that, that, um, that was, that was important. I think that, that I feel like it's sort of like put it all into perspective in a way that it maybe wasn't quite as clear before. So. so beautiful, Michael. Well, speaking of family, you have your, as we say, you can get your tickets at Aladdin. And as you see, as we'll just flash some of the beautiful nice. pictures from the show, <laughs> uh, Aladdin, um, you can get your tickets at Aladdin the musical. Look how beautiful the show is. <laughs> you, it's, 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 there's so many beautiful moments to take a picture at. You can go to Aladdin, the musical.com. This cast before I let you go, Michael and Tia and Dennis, and I, Don has been on this show before. He's a steam stealing trip jer Jersey here. Oh I uh, yes, Jersey. That's right. He is <laughs> he is the absolute best and an original cast member too to boot. So he's just iconic in this role. He I laugh every time I'm on stage with him. He's so great. <laughs> Um, if you haven't seen the show yet, what are, what are you waiting for? Now's the time. There's great seats available. Go to www.aladdinthemusical.com. Go see all the Disney shows uh, on Broadway. If it's The Lion King, Aladdin, make it a whole little trifecta weekend. Do do what you need to do to and introduce theater to young, to the youth, which is such an important part because it really allows people to fall in love with the art form of telling stories. That's what it's all about. Yes, absolutely. Yes, thanks for your hard work and sacrifice. Um, I had a blast. I can't tell you... Thank you so much for the work you're doing. Thank you for the work you're doing on stage. I was exhausted for you. <laughs> Two shows on a Wednesday, then mm -hmm. go home, three month old baby, and then wake up and have a show tonight. Adrenaline. Adrenaline does amazing things, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, this is only the beginning. I can't wait to see uh, all of the work you do from here. Congratulations on everything, and we'll be rooting and watching. Robert, thank you so much. Such a pleasure to get to talk with you today. Well, <laughs> you'd think after half a year of this, I'd get the hang of it and doing a show online for three years. Marie asked, can you ask him what his favorite musical number is in Aladdin? So I text him because we filmed this uh, earlier this week because he's right now on stage uh, in Aladdin as we speak. And um, I text him and I will get you an answer and I will report back to you. I pinky swear promise. Um, oh, we may have an answer. Maybe a break. Never had a friend like me. Ba -da -ba. Yeah, yeah. Ba -da -ba. Yeah, so good. Make sure you check out AladdinOnBroadway.com. Get your tickets to see AladdinOnBroadway.com. Love back to you. Yes, Christine Michael is talented and he brings his own magic. You are so good at You should be a copywriter. Like, you should write copy for shows. Yeah, good one. He's such a good guy. Next week, Oba Ababa Tante is a Tony nominee. He's an Emmy winner. He's worked with so many people that we have had on this show. He won an Emmy with Anna Marie Horsford on uh, Soap. He's been in Dream Girls with Jennifer Holiday. He's been with Liza. He's worked with everyone. He's going to spill all the tea and all the beans and tell you all the news next week. That's 
that is Mike texting me. See, I was texting him because we were talking about him. I promised you a sneak peek of the Buble show. This is the ending of the show. This is called Bring It On Home, which is from his new album called Higher. Uh, to my friends out there on the road, be safe, everybody. Love to each and every single one of you. If you want to support the show, make sure you Venmo at Arban, and we are so appreciative of all the help you get. It helps promote the show and continue. If you want to see me, go to robertbannon.com. It's been updated. It's been updated with lots of new events. I'll be in Jersey on uh, the 18th of September. You can get your tickets with Paul Simeon. You can see me at Marie's event, which has information on my website. That will be up by the end of the night. We have a show in New York City. We have a show in LA. We have a show in Massachusetts. I'll be doing a Christmas show in New York and New Jersey and I more events. I'll be doing a food truck festival. You can hire me and I will, if you pay, if you build it, they will come. Uh, I hope you join me next week for Oba Bamba Tante two nights till next time. The best is surely always uh, yet to come. Let's bring this show on home. Thank you all for your love and light. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye everybody. Oh,